بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Or you don't want to hire me because I have a lihya. Or I'm telling you that on Fridays, I have to go to Jummah. They're like, oh, wait a minute, Friday is Jummah. Come on, man, this is the middle of the day. You can't just leave work. Be like, look here, man. I will work part, I'll work morning time. I'll work night time. I'll work overtime. I'll work weekend time. I'll work Christmas, Thanksgiving. New Year's, I work any other time, but Friday at noon is Allah's time. See ya. I'm out of here. No matter what you say. When we begin to think like this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will begin to change your life and He will begin to change our condition. And I'm not telling you this just from reading in some books. I'm telling you this because I have put it to the test over and over and over again. I wouldn't be here right now doing what I'm doing if I didn't put it to the test. I've done it and I've seen over and over again how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never abandons his slave when his slave turns to him. Never, ever, without a doubt. There was one point, just to give you a little personal experience, I don't like to put my personal stories in, but just to let you know, it works. And I've tried it many times. I had a job when I first moved to Florida. I was a new Muslim. Had left South Carolina and, and, and was trying to gain knowledge of my deen. And I, the only job I could take was a crazy construction job in Florida in the summertime, 90 degrees outside, man. 95 degrees with the humidity at like 87% outside dying, man. I'm not, I'm not made for this type of stuff. And on Friday, but I was doing it because this was the only job I can find and I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of me. I went on Friday and told my boss, look, I gotta go to Juma. I gotta go, I'm gonna take a long lunch today, but I'll stay late. He was like, no man, there's no leaving. You don't leave this work site. I'm like, look, this is my religious obligation. I have to go to the Juma on Friday. He was like, look, if you leave the job, then you're fired. I said, well, I'll see you in two weeks to get my check. Because I'm out. And I left. I just left. And I said to myself, Husband Allah wa ni'ma wa Allah is sufficient for me, man. I don't need, no. I'm not going to violate my deen because I think I need something from the dunya. So I left, went to Juma, not knowing how I'm going to get another job, not knowing how I'm going to take care of myself. I went to Juma, and I was leaving Juma, and I made the dua during the, the, the two, the two Juma, one of the ones that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is, is, is never unheard from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I made one of those. So Ya Allah, my, my, my welfare is in your hands. I walked outside of Juma, and there was a brother who had just come from Philistine, a sheikh. From Philistine, one of the most knowledgeable brothers I've ever met in my entire existence. And he came from Philistine and he had a he owned a pizza shop in Al Quds in Jerusalem. And he came here to open up a pizza shop and establish his family here because of all the fitna in, in uh, Jerusalem at the time. And he came up to me, asked what he said, uh, Brother Yusha, do you have a job right now? I said, Actually, no, I just quit today. He said, Well, I need somebody to work for me. And he hired me on the spot and gave me double what I was making at the construction job. And this is just one instance of about a thousand that I could give you of how when you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He never ever lets you down. Because if He let me down, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. I abandoned three to four martial arts schools I had running full time in Florida. Doing well off, had more of the dunya than I knew what to do with. And left it, knowing that this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had for me to do. This was for me to do. I knew this was my calling. I needed to tell these people about Islam that I'm in this country that I'm from. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never had me to worry about anything. Ever. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. When we begin to think like this, that we want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything else, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at us and begin to love us again. He'll begin to love us again. And when He begins to love us again, 
Our Rasul Sallallahu said that a, 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 the Muslim does good actions so much until Allah loves him. And then when Allah loves him, he will tell the angels nearest to him, I love so and so, so you love them. And those angels will communicate that down to all of creation until the entire creation begins to love this person. This was what our Rasul Sallallahu had. This is what the Sahaba had and this is why the whole world was given to them. Because the creation loved them. Because even the non-Muslims whose countries they conquered loved them so much that when they decided to leave and try to hand the governorship back over to the people, the people would beg them to stay and adopt the deen of their conquerors in mass until the entire world was willingly under La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah because these Muslims put their priorities in place. Allah came first, everything else came second. My job came second, the dunya comes second, the family comes second, your children come second. Your wife, your husband comes second. And this is what I, I tell my family sometimes all the time. When you know we tell somebody, oh I love you more than anyone else in the world. Sometimes our husband or wife, you know we tell each other that. Come on, don't play with me man. <laughs> you know, oh yeah honey, I love you more than anything in the world. Your wife should turn around and tell you, then you got a mistake. You have, you have me mistaken. You should love Allah and His Messenger more than anything in this world. Then your mother, then your father, and then me. This is the way we have to put our priorities in check. That we know what we're dealing with. Because when we put our priorities in disarray, we have this condition that we look. I'll tell you how we look as an Ummah from a hole. If you were to look up from above and see us all at one time, how many of you have ever went and stuck a stick in an ant hill? How many? Come on now. You're playing on me. How many of you tortured ants? <laughs> You go and you stick a little stick in the ant hill, what happens? They all start scrambling, trying to figure out what's going on. And they're all running in 30,000 different directions, trying to figure out what's going on. In disarray, man. This is us. This is how we look. We look like somebody is taking and stuck in a stick in the ant hill, and we have no idea what's going on. We know there's a problem. We know we're all trying to fix it in a different way, and we're getting nothing done. And I'll tell you why. Because our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whosoever's vision, their, their focus, their attention is on this dunya. That means when they wake up in the morning, the first thing they're thinking about is what I got to do today in this dunya. How am I going to make some money? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? This is all they think about. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah will make that person's affairs in disorder. He will make your affairs like this. And we all know those people. They seem like they have so much to do, but they get nothing done. And they look crazy doing it. And run themselves crazy. I've seen brothers like that. They're like, chuk, 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 chuk. where are you going, Akhi? I gotta go to this class, and I be at that class, and I gotta go to work, and then I gotta go to another job. And I gotta... Akhi, slow down, man. Did you make salah yet? Salah. Oh, subhanAllah. I missed like three already. And they, this is their condition. And also, by chasing this dunya, we don't know that we're losing it. Because our Rasul Sallallahu said, not only would his affairs be in disarray, Allah will place poverty between his two eyes. Allah will place poverty between his two eyes. And he will get nothing from this dunya except that which Allah has already ordained for him. What was written for you before Allah even created you. That's all you'll get. If Allah means for you to get $200 a week, I don't care if you get a job that's giving you $1,000 a week. At the end of the day, you're going to end up with $200. This is the Qadr of Allah. If you think I'm playing games, test it. Try it out, see, look at people's lives. Look at how easily money comes and goes.